We have a lot of restaurants to try. We're going to go to folk restaurants, high-class restaurants, modern, royal, regional, everything. A lot of places to go, people to meet, and food to eat, so we'll skip the preamble and get right down into the video. I started my journey in the town of Pstrongova, or trout in English. My ambition was simple, taste the food, but don't overeat on the first meal. So we are starting off with prozaki. This is actually the first time that I am trying this food. It is made on a base of sour milk and flour. I want to point out that they're served warm, which gives you a nice vintage home feeling. Old Polski Babcha's kitchen, and uh, that's nothing to complain about. So let's taste. Gentle, comforting, and for lack of better words, very delicious. Despite the fact that we are nearly 1,000 kilometers away from the sea, people in Poland through history have enjoyed fresh fish on account of the flowing rivers that went through their villages. The name of this dish is ironically trout served trout style. It was just the start and my stomach was already full, so saying no to dessert would have been the smart thing to do. I suppose I'm not that smart. Oh, dziękuję. <laughs> okay, now that is one way to end a perfect meal. Beautiful Polish style apple pie served with whipped cream, cold ice cream under a beautiful summer sky. That apple pie won a regional food contest back in 2017, so I don't regret eating it. Actually, in a weird way, it got me warmed up to eat some nobleman hunting food. This is a local style restaurant, very popular in the region, and my gracious hosts who are accompanying me during the meal have prepared a dish that has truly surprised me. This is Przykładaniec with bread. I don't imagine that this is truly for one man to eat. I'm not even going to attempt it, but people used to make this, wrap it in a rag, and then insulate it with hay and take it hunting during the winter. It was a rich man's dish. There is fried meats, onions with some butter, and an entire loaf of bread. Also, of course, the notorious Polish pickle. Yeah. One hand, the sandwich, the other hand, the pickle. Taka ciężki. Sadzonce. It's definitely not something that you'd eat every single day, but it's definitely something that you should try at least once in your life. CK Galicia is known for having some of the best pierogi in Poland, and they make an extremely wide assortment of the dish. In fact, I liked their fruit pierogi so much that I returned here just two days after filming this to eat it again with my family. It's great. It was interesting to see how aristocratic people packed their hunting food. So I thought I'd go ahead and visit this castle in Dubiecko to get a feeling for how they ate their food at home. All right, now this is the part of my day where things get a little bit more royal. I'm sitting in a castle and I'm about to eat meat pasta made of wild animals. That is very interesting. It's ground meat, maybe a mixture of meat, served with some delicate cranberry sauce. The sweet plays off of the salty. I would say that indeed, it's food fit for a king or a nobleman who once lived in this castle. But he's gone, and I'm eating here now. most timeless view we find here in Podkarpatskia. We also find a soup known as the devil and bishop soup, which I must confront. Now on first sight, this looks like a very passive 
ordinary tomato soup. It's terribly spicy. When you stir this, it turns out not to be quite as spicy. It loses its kick a little bit. I think that I'm experiencing the royalty known by those who stood before me through hundreds of years. I once traveled 800 kilometers in a single day to eat pierogi. at what is one of my favorite restaurants in the world. So I guess you know that I have a slight obsession with this dish. <laughs> yes, I heard about that. Um, they, this is probably that dish that you fall in love some time ago. This is really typical regional dish uh, here in Podcarpaccia. This particular one is stuffed with the um, cottage cheese, buckwheat, potatoes, onion, which is very long stew on the bottom. I guess it's time for me to eat your pierogi. So you pro probably you just had big piece of um, cottage cheese right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dough is quite melted in oh. your mouth. <laughs> I hope so. I hate to say it. And I don't want to come off as an arrogant person, but I think I know these pierogi better than you do at this point. Because <laughs> my description would be far more accurate. So you really might not expect that Spending all the eating is exhausting, but it truly is. I would like to go to the nice gym that this hotel has and burn some calories, but it's too late. Basically, what awaits me is this bed. So hopefully dreams are an effective way of burning calories, but I suppose there's only one way to really find out. For those interested in modern luxury food, we made a quick stop at Jeshuf's premier five-star hotel Bristol. In addition to Asian and Italian cuisine, visitors can experience a New York City style take on Polish food. So this is sour dough soup. It is actually made with fermented bread, hard-boiled egg served inside of a bread bowl. And it's interesting because I'm having the village experience in the middle of an urban space. And I forgot to mention that there's sausage in here. <laughs> that was pretty silly of me. And uh, it looks like some potato. So I guess I'm not the expert that I thought I was, but let's give it a try. This taste, I mean, <laughs> it's alarming basically. It's this really interesting taste of fermentation and grilled sausage, heavy egg uh, with the, with the you know, unusual quality that you'd only find in this part of Europe. It's, uh, I think, a classic and a favorite. I know that when Ukrainians come to Poland, from what I hear, they never leave without eating some good Polish żorek. Neither should you, by the way. Here we are about to try eating venison served with fresh mushrooms. The fresh mushrooms are a seasonal theme. I don't think I've ever had venison before, so this is pretty new to me. Far more benign than beef. This is just tender, lush. It's just something extraordinary about eating fresh mushrooms. So I just had a little chit chat with the chef one. Regarding the meat, I had mentioned that uh, it's meat flavored meat and he told me that in fact it's not even marinated so the flavor comes from a little bit of salt and pepper afterwards some sauces but mostly the meat is just flavored out of its quality now my only real problem is a first world one I've been eating in restaurants for two days straight and I have to finish this because it's too good to let go at this point in my adventure I was starting to understand why gluttony is considered a sin
So to avoid death from overeating, I decided to get some exercise on Poland's Green Vallow Trail. This was an amazing chance to take in timeless landscapes and heritage responsible for the dishes I was out to discover. The ride also helped me rebuild my appetite. Now these on first glance appear to be potatoes, but they are actually mixed together with flour and seasoned to taste kind of like pierogies. I was told that in the old days, people ate with a spoon right out of the gigantic pot. Actually, I'm not even sure how do you eat this off of a spoon. <laughs> That is a bizarre experience. The best way I can describe that is a pierogi made out of potato. This is a pork knuckle marinated in locally crafted honey. And this is incredible. Now, I haven't even eaten this yet, but I can tell you that the meat is absolutely tender, soft. I'm going to enjoy it. So the most amazing thing about this particular dish is that the meat was the flavor. Stinging nettle is a wicked plant that basically feels like a bee sting when you touch it. To my surprise, it's also used as a main ingredient in soup. This is stinging nettle soup with a poached egg and village noodles. I'm very curious and a little bit scared to find out what it's like to, to eat this. It has a very natural herbal taste to it, almost like mint. I'm telling you, it tastes much better than it feels to touch. These small dumplings are a leftover of the space which was once known as Krese, where three cultures combined. They contain delicate meat and are intended to be eaten in one bite because there's a nice broth inside that's supposed to enlighten your taste buds upon eating it. But not in bites, only the entire thing, one go. Just put it into your mouth. It's actually a delicate, kind of buttery, soft taste. When you bite into it, you're hit with a strong taste of pepper and meat. So it's interesting, there's a lot of contrast in this deceptive looking little dumpling. Totally worth a try. Eating were a sport, I would probably be considered an Olympian by now, but I'm not done yet. In fact, I'm going to indulge in one last pierogi meal, but this time I'm mixing it with senior citizens, musical talent, and the deep Polish village. I can get no satisfaction. I can get no satisfaction because I try. <laughs> Thank you. Officially the best pierogies I ever had. <laughs> and with that, my adventure came to a close. But I was left wondering, was there any Polish food I forgot to try this time around? <laughs> <laughs>